Okay, with this example, uh, we're going to do another income and substitution effects example, but with the Giffen good. So we're dealing with the normal two good economy. Um, good A is going to be a normal good on the, along the vertical axis. Good B is going to be a Giffen good along the horizontal axis. Giffen goods are uh, similar to inferior goods, but uh, they're this really paradoxical case where if the price of this good increases, then we expect to spend more on that good. Uh, conversely, if the price of this good uh, decreases, we expect to spend less on this good. Um, so let me show you how what that looks like in the two good economy uh, with a, an individual, you know, maximizing the utility over uh, max, you know, finding the optimal consumption bundle over two goods. So first off, since the Giffen good is such a paradoxical example, I just kind of wanted to show you um, what things look like with a normal good. So with this diagram I'm drawn here, um, what we're doing is uh, decreasing the price of good B. So what we did is we started over at uh, this budget line here, um, budget line sub 1, uh, and then we had this old indifference curve, IC sub 1. So we started off at this consumption bundle here. Uh, it had some quantity of good A, you know, at this point about right here. Uh, so we had some consumption of good A around this quantity right here. Uh, and we, had, we started off with uh, this quantity of consumption of good B right here. Uh, and then we show a decrease in the price of good B. So that's really easy to show. All we have to do is push out the budget line to this point here. So notice that the intersection along the quantity of good A axis stays the same because the price of good A has not changed and income hasn't changed. But because the price of good B has changed, uh, it's gone down, it means that if we were to spend all of our money on good B, we'd be able to consume more. So this intersection shifts from this point over to this point, and we have a new budget line over here. So, uh, and then since this is a normal good, we have a very normal looking indifference curve. This indifference curve I tried to do, draw as pretty much as parallel as possible to our initial budget line. So we have our final consumption bundle after the decrease in the price of good B to this point here. So we shifted from this point to this point, uh, given a decrease in the price of good B. So we started off at this quantity of good B, and we shifted to this quantity of good B. So uh, rather obviously, um, if the price of some good goes down, we kind of expect our quantity of consumption of that thing to, to go up. Uh, similarly, uh, the quantity of consumption spent on good A was at this point, and then we went down to this point, given the decrease in the price of good B. So basically, we shifted away consumption a little bit. Um, we could break down the shift from this point to this point into two effects the income and the substitution effect. So first off, the substitution effect. Um, given that now good B is relatively less expensive than good A, uh, we expect some kind of shift in the consumption uh, from good A to good B. So here the substitution effect is positive. So as the um, price of good B decreases, we decrease our consumption of good A from here to here, and we increase our consumption to good B from this point to this point. Um, and then the income effect is uh, the effect, well first off the substitution effect, so this dotted parallel line here that we discussed in some other videos, um, this has the same relative prices as the final budget line. Um, so BL sub 2 here is parallel to our new little hypothetical budget line. So that means we have the same relative prices, but We've shifted it inward, so we've kind of like effectively taken away someone's income. So from this point to this point, we have identical relative prices, um, but the thing we've changed is this person's income, kind of theoretically their income. So shifting from here to here, they're on the exact same indifference curve. The only difference between this budget line and this budget line are the relative prices of good A and good B. So that means the shift from here to here, there's no income effect whatsoever. It's all substitution effect. The substitution of um, because we've changed relative prices. So as relative prices change, you shift out of consumption of one good and shift into the consumption of another good. So going from this point right here to this point right here, it's all income effect. You can see the relative prices are identical. The only thing we've changed here is this person's the indifference curve that this person's on.
So the effect from uh, QBS uh, to QB2 is all income effect, which is positive. Normal goods, um, so this is a decrease in the price of good B. Normal goods, you're going to have a substitution effect and an income effect that are uh, going in the same direction given this decrease. So now we're going to deal with a Giffen good, and the Giffen good is this very special case. Okay, so let's just start here. Uh, we have our initial budget line, and we have our initial difference curve. And then what we're going to do is we're going to have a decrease in good B. So to show a decrease in good B, we need to draw a new budget line. The new budget line, um, the intersection of the budget line over here is going to be identical because the price of good A is, uh, is unchanged and we haven't changed income. Um, where is the new budget line going to intersect this, the horizontal axis over here? Um, because there's a decrease in the price of good B, that means the budget line uh, is going to end somewhere over here. Great. So we've got our new budget line here, um, uh, given the decrease in the price of good B. So uh, now where is the indifference curve? What, what's the new optimal consumption bundle? So this is a Giffen good. So this is going to be a very special case. So given the decrease in the price of good B, what we're going to need to show is a decrease in consumption of good B. So this point is going to have, the, the new intersection is going to have to hit the budget line. The new optimal consumption bundle is going to have to be somewhere along this point over here. So, um, so once again, given a decrease in the price of good B, because this is a Giffen good, we're going to have to show a decrease in the consumption of good B. So the indifference curve is going to have to intersect our new budget line somewhere in this area over here. Cool. So this is our new indifference curve, this red line running along here. Um, given the decrease in the price in good B, we have this new optimal consumption bundle over here. And note how I drew the budget, the uh, the new indifference curve, in this super odd special way. So from here to here, the distance is huge, and then for the difference between these two indifference curves here and here is just minute. Like there's basically a pixel difference between the two indifference curves, and that by drawing the indifference curves that way, we show that this is a Giffen good. So going from this point to this point, we're decreasing our consumption of good B. And you can see how this is a paradoxical uh, case because we've decreased the price of good B, and yet we are decreasing our consumption of good B, and that's super unusual. Usually if the price of something goes down, in general people consume a bit more of it. Uh, okay, so now let's break down um, the move from here to here into two effects, the income effect and the substitution effect. So first off, um, you know, how do you show that difference between the income effect and the substitution effect? How do you break down the move? Well, what you do is you start with the final budget line, BL sub 2, and what we're going to do is draw a line that runs parallel to BL sub 2. Okay, so that line, which I have here in a dotted line, um, this line here has the same relative prices as our final budget line. Uh, and if you remember, if you increase someone's income, you know, you keep the same relative prices, uh, you just shift the um, budget line out parallel. Similarly, if you were to take away someone's income, you would shift in the budget line inwards because the, the same relative, the prices, the relative prices are the same. So this line right here has the same relative prices, but allows us to kind of shift incomes around. And what we're going to do is we're going to move this new budget line so that it's parallel at some point to the old indifference curve. So I'm going to shift this until I could find a point where it's parallel to the old indifference curve, say about right there. And the bundle of that point is about right here at Q to the B sub S. So from this point here to this point here, so that is to say the shift of consumption of, quant of good B from here to here is all the substitution effect. So notice that we've kept them on the same indifference curve. So effectively, we've kept them at identical income. And all we've done is change relative prices. Remember that the price of quantity of good B changed. So we just shifted relative prices to show uh, what the substitution effect is, given those change in prices. Since good B is now relatively cheaper than good A, we've shifted consumption away from A 
So from here to here is the decrease in consumption of A, and the shift from this point to this point, that is to say from uh, QB1 to QBS, is all the substitution effect. And it's a positive effect given that the price of B has gone down. Now the income effect is the move from this point here, QBS, to this level over here, QB2. So going from QBS to QB2, the income effect, which is negative. So from here to here. Uh, we saw, or you, I have another video just for inferior goods. Um, and we've already seen income effects that are negative. That's just the definition of any uh, uh, inferior good. But note that from here to here, this distance from QBS to QB2 is greater than the distance from here to here. So the substitution effect, uh, which is a positive effect, is less than income effect, the negative effect. So the definition of the Skiffen good is that the negative income effect is more than the positive substitution effect. So the income effect for this inferior good, if the income effect for this inferior good overpowers the substitution effect, then we have a given good. So paradoxically here, we have a situation where um, given a decrease in the price of something, we are decreasing the consumption of this. Uh, real world examples, uh, Wikipedia talks about the uh, Potato famine, the example I heard, um, is like prices of electricity in the winter in like really cold places. I know they say like University of Wisconsin-Madison, it's so cold there that you spend, you usually spend so much money on uh, heating, for example. So, uh, you know, over the winters, people spend a lot of money on heating their house in the winter. Um, and the idea is that if the price of heating goes down, you know, if gas or electric goes down, um, then people are given enough, have enough money so that they can take a vacation in some kind of warmer climb. So by taking a vacation and going somewhere else, uh, they spend less money on heating in the first place. So uh, with that example, the price of heating goes down, which allows people to spend more money on this alternative, you know, like traveling to another place so they didn't have to spend money on heating in the first place. Where if the price of heating uh, went up, um, then they wouldn't be able to afford those vacations or longer vacations uh, in warmer areas in the first place. You know, they have to stay home more and then spend more money on heating in the first place. Um, Giffen goods are really rare, so try not to think too intuitively about it. But there's a couple examples that, you know, theoretically, I guess, could exist. Um, hopefully this is helpful. I try to kind of go into one of the more really technical examples, but if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks and have a good day.